All right, the next guy I'm gonna introduce is one of my favorite people in the entire world. And you know why? It's hard to have a bad day when you're talking to Sonny Malekris. Sonny has started, he's a legend in morning radio, had his own morning radio show. He's done things in cartoons and commercials. He's been an actor. He's done all kinds of different things. But he has never forgotten where he's from and what he's all about. And he is all about San Antonio. He's my favorite. Please welcome Mr. Sonny Melendrez. Thank you. How about a big hand for my favorite guy, Steve Streister? Yeah. All right. Where's that? Uh, where's that cannon? We're gonna need it in a little bit. Okay. You'll you'll know when. You'll know when. Let me come out here. Get closer, you guys. I like what the chief said about a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of noise, because guess this, this is the place where your San Antonio Spurs won the national championship. That's right. You are in the house of greatness. In fact, the first concert here was back in the early 90s with a man named Paul McCartney, one of the original Beatles, and a little trivia, the first song that he sang for you teachers was Drive My Car. Baby, you can drive my car. Yeah. Not only that, but all these incredible sports, high schools, colleges, they've all had their graduation ceremonies here. This is the house of greatness. But do you know who had the biggest concert so far ever in the history of the Alamo Dome? You may recognize a man named George Strait. 70,000 people right here in the Alamo Dome. So what I want to talk to you about is your greatness. Where is your house of greatness? Is it in where you live? Is it in your school? Is it wherever you are? See, every one of us has some kind of greatness. John, this is a performer, not just as an athlete, but as a human being with great potential. And I'll tell you a little story. When I was your age, I was also safety patrol. This is the 79th, and by the way, I was a, I was a patrolman, I was a sergeant, and then I was a captain. Got that blue badge. How many of you have the blue badge right now? Yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. That's right. It's great, nothing like it. But I had a dream when I was about 11, 12 years old, and that dream was to do the voices of cartoons. I was watching Yogi Bear, and I found out that I could actually impersonate these cartoon characters. And Yogi Bear always sounded like, hey, 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 I'm Yogi Bear. I'm smarter than the average bear. And his little friend was named Boo Boo. Yogi, Yogi, we're gonna get in trouble with the ranger. Tengo miedo, vato. He was bilingual, right? <laughs> So guess what? Because I had that dream, because I had the greatness inside me, I didn't let go. I kept going and going and started learning all these different voices. And one day, I got my first job on the radio, and then another job. And I went from San Antonio to Los Angeles, and there I was in Hollywood, to one of the biggest stations in the country. And I get a call from an agent who said, have you ever thought about doing cartoons? I said, are you kidding? I've dreamt about it all my life. And so I gave him my tape, what I sounded like. He got me my first job, and it was doing voices on a cartoon series called The Jetsons. And there I was with the original cast. You can imagine, I was a kid your age, and now I'm there with those people, with the voices that I heard. So one of the people who was the voice of George Jetson, which was uh, not George Jetson, but also George Jetson's boss, his name was Mel Blank. Mel Blank was also the voice of Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, Foghorn Leghorn. And guess what? He became my mentor. He shared his greatness with me and taught me all his voices. You want to hear some? Yeah! 
All right, thought you'd never ask. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you Elmer Fudd, Bugs Bunny, Sylvester, Tweety, Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Donald Duck, and Foghorn Leghorn. You ready? Okay, first, Elmer Fudd is always wearing that funny hat and funny gun. He's looking for, for the little gray rabbit, and he says, Be very, very quiet. I'm looking for a little gray rabbit. And when I find that rabbit, I want to tear my pot, whim from whim. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Have you seen a widow gray rabbit? Big eyes, big ears, yeah. big teeth. Yeah. I ain't seen him. Ain't I a stinker? <laughs> Ooh, I taught, I taught pretty cat. I did, I did taught pretty cat. <laughs> you bet that for a pretty cat. The pretty cat was me. Well, I'm the wildest, rootinest, tootinest, shootinest. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Boys and girls, it's your old pal Mickey. Hey, Goofy, come and say hi to the kids. Oh, gosh, Mickey, I'm so bashful. <laughs> <laughs>